Hello, Gene Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. A couple of short items, then on to the main subject for today. The first one has to do with something I've been talking about for the last few vlogs, almost every vlog of the last two or three, the possibility of Donald Trump forming a third party and running for the presidency. Well, my suggestion was to run on a joint ticket or a fusion ticket or to be a fusion candidate of two parties, of his own party, which people rumor would be called the Patriot Party. So I'm going to use the Patriot Party just for convenience to have something to call it. And the Republican Party. I have more on that in a second. But first of all, I've got to show you this. Well, here's a headline. Shock poll. Trump Patriot Party would win almost quarter of voters drop GOP to third place. A hypothetical Patriot Party led by President Donald Trump would win the support of almost a quarter, 23% of the electorate, bumping the GOP down to third place with just 17%, according to a new Just the News poll with Scott Rasmussen. Now, what they're saying in this article is that, well, first, let me give you the actual numbers from the poll. The GOP, if there were a Patriot Party, a, another party, a third party, the GOP would drop down to 17 percent. The Democrats would have 46 percent. The Patriot Party would have 23 percent ahead of the Republican Party. Then you have independents or whatever, the 14 percent. The concern that is expressed in the article or the projection in the article is that with the Patriot Party, the Democrats would be guaranteed to win. They would get 46 percent in the GOP and the Patriots would split the, well, except for that 14 percent, they would just split the, the vote, the conservative vote, put it that way, and the Democrats would win. I am not so sure about that. First of all, because as I've said in the past, Trump is a unique candidate, a unique personality on the political scene, so I would not write him off. But also, I've mentioned in the past something called the 13 Keys to the White House uh, prediction methodology, a presidential prediction methodology that was created by a professor of American history, Alan Lickman. And what he does, I won't go into a lot of detail on it, just that he has these 13 statements that are presented as true statements, and if five or fewer are false, the party in the White House, regardless of who the candidate is, that's what his breakthrough is primarily, that it's the party. People vote for whether, or they vote on whether they're happy with the party, the performance of the party in, in power, and it doesn't really matter who who the candidate is. I'm not 100% uh, sure about that, but I, I'm not going to dispute that. The point is that he has been right 100% of the time in the past, and that's why I, for one, take him seriously. So one of the true-false statements is there is no significant third-party challenge. Obviously, if this poll is anything to go by, if Trump formed a, a Patriot Party, there would be a significant third party. And according to Lichtman, that triggers a, a false, it flips a true statement to false, and it hurts the party in power, which is the Democrats. So if Lichtman is right, then Trump forming a third party is going to hurt the Democrats, and depending on how many other statements turn out to be false. And I mentioned in the past, one of them will do, is whether the the candidate for the incumbent party is the sitting president, so it will depend on whether Biden runs again. Uh, there's another one of whether there's, well, I'm going to get to another one, and it's, well, I'll get to it right now. So uh, what I'm saying is that I still stick to my advice that Trump should form a, consider forming a third party because he could run on both tickets, and hopefully that would, well, this should scare the, the GOP to nominate Trump, and then he would be the, the candidate for these two parties. If they don't, then he's really got nothing to lose by running on the third party, since he's not going to be the, the GOP candidate anyway. And as I said in the past, the way they've treated him, well, it depends also, uh, Patriot Party, how much of a patriot, I guess, Trump is, whether he would want to 
let the Democrats win again, even though the, the 13 keys notwithstanding that the, the Democrats maybe would win. I read that, I'm not going to put a, a headline up, but I read that people close to Trump have said that he has ruled out a third party. So this might just be um, useless speculation. If that article is right, that he's not planning a third party run. What he definitely is planning, uh, actually two things, my understanding, and they're both very good. He may be holding off on a third party, maybe he will later, but now he's focused on two things. One of them, and I'll have more to say about this, I think tomorrow, is to lobby these states, especially the swing states, to change their election laws to make it harder for the Democrats to cheat. And since we have repressed speech here on YouTube, let me just, I have to say, Biden is so wonderful and the election was fair and, and nobody cheated. The Democrats didn't cheat. All I'm saying is that we want to rule out the possibility of somebody cheating in the future. And it could be, it doesn't have to be the, the Democrats, okay? So don't uh, take me off the air or don't um, take this vlog off the, off the YouTube, okay? But what I'm saying is Trump is going to focus on getting the laws changed or just getting the laws that the, the state legislatures actually lawfully enacted just complied with because one state, uh, just for example, Pennsylvania, the Secretary of State and the governor, they violated the Pennsylvania state election laws. And, and it's gone. They just don't want that to happen again, the Republicans. And Trump obviously does not want that to happen again if he runs again. So that's what he's going to focus on, or one of two things. The other thing he's going to focus on is, it looks uh, to me, campaigning for Republican candidates in 2022 for the, the Senate and the House so that the Republicans can take back the Senate and the House. That's, well, first of all, obviously it helps Trump because obviously if he does run and win in 2024, he would want to have a Republican Senate and a Republican House. So it's in his own interest, never mind the, for the good of the country, for, oh, and I should put full disclosure, I'm a conservative, so when I say good of the country, it's from a conservative standpoint. Always take whatever I say uh, in the light of it being said by a conservative, okay? So disclaimer, uh, I'm telling you up front, I'm a conservative. It's not obvious already. So that would be another reason why he would want to spend at least the next two years focusing mostly on winning back the House and the Senate for the Republicans. But another reason would be is that if Trump is instrumental, if he pays, if the Republicans, well, even if they only gain seats, but if the Republicans retake the House and the Senate and it, it becomes obvious that Trump has played a large role in that happening, I don't see how they deny him the nomination. I, I really don't, because he will have proven to really have helped the Republican Party and stop the Biden agenda pretty much dead, except for these uh, executive orders that he seems to be signing and handing out like after dinner mints. You, you see the photo of him with a, a stack that high. And every photo, I don't know if they're taken on the same day or diff if they're taken on different days. And that's really scary because the, the stack is always that high. Now, I want to go back to, well, I was talking about the 13 keys a moment ago. One of the other keys is there is no ongoing social unrest. That, I think, is already obviously another false um, item because, well, here is Tacoma, Washington. Let me show you some video here, Tacoma, Washington. This was yesterday, I believe. It's a, a riot in Tacoma, Washington by Antifa. So, well, watch the video and then I'll give you some more comments. Yeah. 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 This is not a 
That video shows that the unrest is ongoing. There is still unrest. I don't expect it to stop for, well, for the entirety of Biden's term, unless Biden, well, unless the local authorities in these states really get serious and turn loose their, uh, we'll call them the National Guard, and do something about these riots. But I think they have a problem doing that because the, this is the left that is rioting. Uh, again, it, the what happened in the Capitol is unique because it's the only right-wing uh, disturbance. I would not even call that a riot, but it's the only right wing, whatever you want to call it, that ha has happened. And there were a lot of, there were left-wingers from Black Lives Matter, we now know who participated in that riot. So it wasn't it wasn't even all uh, Trump supporters or or people on the right. But getting back to this riot, that is another false key. But it also shows that the this whole idea that get Trump out of the White House, elect Joe Biden, and everything is fine. That's obviously not true. And they can't blame it on Trump anymore because he's not in office, so it can't be a reaction to Trump. It's obviously a reaction to Biden. So what are our Democratic friends and our uh, liberal friends going to say about that? It's going to be interesting. But what I think they're going to say or try to say so far uh, from what I've seen, is say nothing, because I'm not seeing this getting much play at all. Uh, you see, this is one of those things that you see on a conservative website, but it gets buried in the liberal media, which is most of the media. Now on to today's subject, which is, uh, you, you know from the title, that there are no moderates in the Democratic Party. I say this because you independent voters, you people, well, you people in New Mexico, you voted for Biden. Biden won New Mexico by a very large margin. And now one of Biden's first executive orders is to stop fracking, stop oil exploration on federal land. 
New Mexico gets half of its oil. The oil companies there, they drill. Half of the places they drill is federal land, not to mention the cancellation of the Keystone Pipeline, which hurts unions and these are union these and these are unions who had workers working on the the pipeline uh, they're out of uh, 10,000 jobs i understand are going to be lost so you got what you voted for don't complain you got what you voted for and uh, put a third item in here headline biden orders nationwide cover up of differences between men and women in orwellian crusade for quote, equality, unquote. And what that is, is anybody, well, any school, for instance, getting federal funds must allow males to participate, cross-dressing males to participate in women's sports, to play on the women's sports team, meaning that women or girls can never win again. It's just going to be men are going to win. They're going to win in the men's divisions and they're going to win in the women's divisions or boys divisions and girls divisions, depending on whether we're talking high school, elementary school, you know, college, whatever. So uh, you too, you got what you voted for. I have read a couple of articles. Feminists are up in arms over this. But the main point I want to get to is, well, you know the old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. How many times have the American people, or at least the people who vote for these so-called moderates, been fooled? The whole idea of Biden's candidacy was that the other candidates were too far left to win, and so it was necessary to engineer to use the weight of the elites to have them throw their weight around to force all the other candidates to withdraw their candidacies and support Joe Biden because he was the most electable, because he was the most moderate. Well, we now know that he is or was, well, yeah, he was the one. Now we know the reality is different, but he was the one who appeared more moderate. That was the same thing with Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton learned his lesson and moved to the right when he lost control of Congress in the first midterms. We're going to see what happens with uh, Biden if he changes when he loses, as I predict both houses going into the, well, after the 2022 elections. But this happened with Clinton. It happened with Biden and it happened with Obama. They, we, these Democratic candidates, they put themselves forward as moderates. They get elected and then they move left. They immediately move left. And then the only question is what they're going to do after they lose the House in the very first midterms. Are they going to, in the case of Clinton, move right? Or in the case of Obama, stay on the left? I guess we're just going to have to wait and find out. But the point I'm getting at, I made it a moment ago, I'm making it again, is, well, like the Who said, don't get, uh, don't get fooled again. Just because whenever a Democrat says, even if they sincerely believe that they will govern as moderates if they are elected, I'm talking about the presidency, uh, they won't. Once they're elected, they are not telling you either they're lying or they're ignorant or they're naive or they, yeah, it's got to be one of those three. We'll just stick with those three. They're either ignorant or they're lying or they're naive, but they are not moderates or they will not govern as moderates. I'm just telling you again, you should know by now. And if you don't know by now, the question I will leave you with is... How many more times is the electorate going to fall for this? How many more times are they going to drink the I'm a moderate Kool-Aid and then find out that they were drinking whatever they served at uh, the James jo at Jonestown? Uh, I, I'm not too hopeful. Given the past record, I am not too hopeful. But 
I try to be optimistic, so uh, I'll do my best to be optimistic. And I'll do my best to ask all of you to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Share it with anybody you think would also like it. Got any comments? Comment section below the video where you can put questions, suggestions for future topics. You could also subscribe. I love getting new subscribers. You can listen to my original music channel where I put fantastic songs that I write and perform myself. There's a link there in the description too. And you could just know how much I appreciate your spending your time with me. And most of all, come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see you all again, bye.